What's up guys, it's Dark Arm Duel. So I just got first place at locals playing Cash Tira. Went completely undefeated and I'm absolutely excited to show you guys this deck list. So before we get into this guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can become part of the notification squad and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards. And definitely check out the merch shelf for these awesome field centers. They're absolutely amazing. They're actual metal. They look amazing and I'm really excited to get you guys these they're amazing i absolutely love them so definitely check them out they actually help out the channel a lot when you guys pick these up so we're going to go ahead and get straight on into this profile so we're going to start off with three copies of cash tira unicorn this card is our main starter for the deck all of our cash tira monsters between fenrir ogre and unicorn are like cyber dragons you can special summon themselves to your side of the field if you don't control the monster this card searches cash tira spell cards and also if it, your opponent activates a monster effect or you actually declare an attack with this card you can look at your opponent's extract and banish a card from it face down we then play three copies of fenrir fenrir is amazing and this card is such a good board breaker it spot removes cards off the field can special summon itself from your hand and can search other cash tier monsters from your deck to your hand we then play three copies of rise heart rise hearts definitely a three of in the build if you control another cash tier monster you can special summon this card from your hand and if it's normal or special summon out to your side of the field you can actually banish a cash tier card from your deck to banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck and also increases cards level to seven. It does lock you into XZ summoning, but that's not that big of a deal because it's usually all we go in for in this build. We can play a single copy of Ogre. Ogre can special summon itself to your side of the field if you don't control a monster, but it's a really good one of in the deck, but I did find myself citing this card out every so often in my matches, and it's just a really good card overall in this deck to be able to make. Because it is a 2800 attack point monster, it does give you an, another option to summon off birth, because this deck is basically birth control now, but it's really insane to be able to just summon out to your side of the field, and I'm also playing preparation to be able to search off this card. We then play a single copy of the Scareclaw Kashira. This card is an amazing extender, just like our copy of Rise Heart. But this card has the ability that during the main phase, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you do, banish a Kashira monster from your hand or your graveyard, which is a really cool effect just to banish one of your Kashira cards, because cards like Theosis will actually go off when you banish them. And this card also has a great ability that if your Kashira monster battles an opponent's monster, that opponent's monster effect is negated until the end of the turn, which came up a lot. I cannot tell you how many times. Times I actually opened this card or actually searched it. I've considered bumping it actually like crazy enough in this build. I've actually considered bumping this card to two because it's so easy to like just summon this card to your side of the field and negate cards on the field. It's just really good to summon in defense position and swing because it can attack while it's in defense position like a super heavy samurai monster applying its defense points for damage calculation. We then play for the hand traps. We're going to be playing three copies of Ash just to stop the opponent from touching the deck. Three copies of Valor. Valor is really good in the deck. It does kind of go against Shifter, but like you're only playing them at three each in the deck, so the likelihood of you opening them both in the same hand isn't crazy. So I feel like the three copies of Effect Valor are really justified in the deck. It's basically stop your opponent's monster effects, and it's just really good. I did find myself siding them out for um, Fisher, and but it's just really good in the deck overall to be able to play, depending on your matchup. We then play three copies of Shifter. Shifter won me so many games. I, I shiftered so many people. It's insane. This card is so good. It just banishes everything that touches the graveyard. You activate this card and usually it's just an auto win button. I actually went up against Snake Eyes and won an entire match basically just because of Shifter. Because in the second game, I just dropped Shifter and won. Uh, we then played two copies of Ghost Mourner. Ghost Mourner's insane. This card is really good. This card was like insane, like so good. This card is so good. It does only stop basically monster effects that are special summon, but it does do burn damage as well, which is why this card is so good in this deck. And I really like this card. Plus it's a tuner and I have a really spicy synchro monster you can actually summon using the hand traps and your copies of your cash tier level sevens. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get in to the spells. So for the spells, we're gonna be playing a single copy of terraforming. Terraforming is really good in the deck as one of because you can search your field spell, which is pressured planet, which is basically Rhoda for the deck. So this card is literally the searcher for the searcher. We then play a single copy of Call by the Grave. Call the Grave just stops your opponent's hand traps while you're going in for all of your plays. 
Played three copies of Theosis. Theosis is insane because this card is almost like e -Tele. It lets you target a cast your monster you control, and then special summon a cast your monster from your deck in defense position that has a different attribute than the one that's on your side of the field. So if you have like a copy of Unicorn on the field, you can target Unicorn, summon Fenrir, since uh, your copy of Unicorn is Wind, and your copy of Fenrir is Earth. So you have different attributes that you have to summon out to your side of the field. They cannot be the same attribute. The only time that ever comes up is with your copy of Fenrir, summoning out the copy of the Scareclaw. You can't do that because they're both Earth. This card also has the ability, if it's banished, then you get to add a banished cashier card from your deck to your hand, which is a really awesome ability. We then play three copies of the best card in the entire deck, and that's three copies of Birth. Birth is insane. It's a monster reborn every turn. If you summon out one of your cashier monsters, you can normal summon it without tributing, which is an insane ability. I love that effect about this card. It's so good to be able to do that, to instantly just normal summon out a level seven without tributing. And also, if your opponent activates a spell card while you control a cashier, you can manage three cards from their graveyard, and that came up so much just banishing cards like the Horus engine because I played up against a Centurion Horus deck um, it just banished those cards out of the graveyard which was so nice we then play three copies of Pressure Planet. This card is really good because it's the rota for the deck. It lets you add one of your cashier monsters from your deck to your hand. And it also has the ability that you, all your monsters go up by 100 attack and defense for every different attribute on the field. So it can go up by a lot, which is really nice. We then play three copies of Prosperity. Prosperity is really good just to help you dig into the deck. And usually with this card, I banish my Link monsters. Maybe my one spicy Synchro monster every so often. But I usually just banish the Link monsters because I didn't find myself going into Heat Soul that much. So you can just banish those instead to be able to just dig into the deck, which is really good. Also, something to note about your copy of Pressure Planet is you don't get the Shangri Era effect off as much as you used to because Arise Heart is now banned, which is really unfortunate for the deck, but it's still really good to be able to use it as a Rota. So that's it for the spells, guys. Let's get into the traps. So for the traps, we're gonna be playing a single copy of Preparation. I found myself citing this out a lot. Um, you could just play Ogre and not play this if you just wanted to play the Ogre for like the big body. I never really used it. Again, I ended up just citing it a lot out because like there was better options in my side deck that you could play like Cosmics if you wanted to. You could main Cosmic in this deck and it'd be really good. But this card is like really good overall if you like go up against a trap matchup. But I didn't go up against Labyrinth. I didn't go up against Eldritch. I didn't go up against any of that. But it's a pretty good option. I did go up against Centurion Snake Eye, and I went up against a Voiceless Voice Player. Won all of them undefeated, which was really nice, but this card is really good overall. We then played three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Infinite Impermanence is just a great hand trap. We're playing 14 hand traps in the deck overall. This card is really good to just basically stop your opponent's monster effects and also lock down entire columns of spells and traps. But this card is really good to go along with our other hand traps. And I'll show you guys all the hand traps really quick that we play. We play three Imperm, we play three Valor, we played three uh, or three Ash, three Valor, and three copies of Shifter, and we also played two copies of Ghost Mourner. Like, I had something for every situation. Every situation. Now, I will mention to you guys, I did consider, I did consider playing Nibiru in here, but in playtesting, I felt like Nibiru was kind of bad because if you Nibiru your opponent, if you do lose the die roll, you go second, you Nibiru your opponent. You're going to have Nibiru on your side of the field. Your opponent's going to have the token on their side of the field. So you can't special summon out cards like Unicorn. It defeats the whole purpose of the deck. So I ended up not playing Nibiru in my deck at all and played cards like Lava Golem that I could side in just in case I needed to. So I really don't feel like you need Nibiru. I feel like this line of hand traps, these 14, was the right way to go. The only downside that you have to watch out for about your hand traps is your copies of Effect Filler have to go to the graveyard. So if you shifter your opponent you can't activate effect filler, which is a little bit of a downside. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get in to the extra deck. So for the extra deck, we're going to be playing a single copy of Dark Arm. Do you guys know I had to play Dark Arm? It, it's just too good. This card is really good. It lets you pop cards on the field. If you go ahead and just swing with this card first, and then you go into main phase two, you can attack with it in the same turn that you activate the effects, which is really nice because it says for the rest of the turn, you cannot activate its effect or you cannot attack with it for the rest of the turn. So you can basically just swing main two, use its effect, pop a card, banish a card from a grave, use it again, banish a card, or pop card, banish a card, which is really good. This card is insane. I really like this card. It won me actually like a couple of games, which is really nice. Uh, one copy of Flare Metal against the Centurion player. This actually won me the game because I brought him down to 400 life points in game two, threw this in defense position. Um, and I was like, if you do anything, you're it's just gonna burn. He was like, ah, yeah, you got it. 
which I mean is insane. I love summoning out this card. Like these are my two favorite XZs ever created, which is funny because they're in the same pose. Like that's really cool. If you guys have never noticed that, like Flare Metal and Dark Arm just like are both facing the same way. That's just really interesting. But this card is like awesome. I love summoning the Ghost Rare. It just looks too good not to summon. It's really just an insane card. It's great for time too. You then play a single copy of Big Eye. Big Eye takes cards. It just is really a good option to be able to take cards from your opponent. And it's overall fantastic to be able to make. I didn't make it that much, but it's still a good option. You got to play it. One copy of Draco Sack. Draco Sack's good because it can pop cards on the field. It can out a bunch of back row cards. It can summon tokens. It's the way you get into Heat Soul is you basically go uh, Draco Sack, summon the tokens, summon out two Link Spiders, link them away, summon out the G Golem Crystal Heart, revive the Link Spider, and then link away the G Golem and the Link Spider for your Heat Soul. And then you get to draw a card every turn that it's on the field, which is really, really good. But I really like this card because it's a good option to be able to make. We can play a single copy of number 76. I summoned this so much more than I thought I was going to summon this. This card is so, so good. Okay, so a lot of people like overlook this card when you're playing cash. Don't overlook this card. This card is so good, this format. Okay, so let me, let me explain to you guys really quickly why this card is good. This card is a really cool ability that becomes an attribute as each material that's attached to it. Attribute, and it cannot be destroyed by battle of the monster with the same attribute. Also, it cannot be destroyed with the activated effects of your opponent's monster with the same attribute attribute it also has a really good ability that quick effect you can target a monster in your opponent's graveyard and detach a material from this card and if you do attach to this card as a material you can take flameberg and princess out of your opponent's graveyard by attaching it as a material to this card and take out cards like the horus engine out of your opponent's graveyard and attach it to this card essentially turning those engines off so this card so good in this deck. I summoned this so many times and it won me so many matches to be able to just summon this card out. And a lot of players were like, what is that? And I'm like, this is how I win. So we then play a single copy of Shangri Era. I never summoned this because Arise Heart is no longer a card. Um, I never summoned it. I usually just got rid of it with, um, I usually just got rid of it with Prosperity, but it's really it's a good option if you go later in the game and you want to summon cards. But if you already have Fenrir Unicorn on the field, why do you need to make this? You already have exactly what you want on the field. It's not necessary that much anymore, but it's still, you got to play it. We can play Typhon to bounce stuff. It's easy to make. I made this like one time and it won me a game, which is really nice. Um, it's very easy to make. If your opponent special summons more than two monsters in their X check on that turn or the following turn or the previous turn, you can summon this card just on top of any monster. It's really good. It's 2,900. It just pop, it balances cards. It's skill drain is just really good. Uh, we then play Ty or, uh, Zeus. Zeus is really good because it just is a board wipe. You can make it on top of any of your XZ monsters, which is really cool to be able to just do that and just board wipe the field. This is my spicy tech card. Okay, so we banish a lot of cards in this deck. You guys know, we play Shifter, we play Fisher in the side deck. This card is really good because for every card that's banished, this card goes up by 100 attack and defense and drops our opponent's monster's attack points down by 100 attack and defense. So it makes our monsters huge or makes our monster opponent's monster small and this particular card huge. Plus Field Spell makes this card even larger. So this card is just really big to just swing in for game. Plus if a card does get banished, it has the ability to banish a card from each your opponent's uh, field and gray, but you have to banish from both. But you just normal summon out a hand trap plus any level seven makes this. We can play a single copy of Appaloosa, never summoned it. One copy of our Heat Soul, never summoned it in the entire tournament. I thought I was gonna summon this a lot more than I did, but I kept XZ locking myself with the plays that I was going into. And so I ended up not even worrying about going into the Link Monsters. It's a good option because you can draw a card every turn by paying a thousand. We then play a single copy of G Golem. This is how we do it with the combo that I showed you guys just a minute ago. You just bring back a Link Spider to summon this card out, which is really nice. One copy of SP, you don't have to play this. You can play any other rank seven, you can play another big eye, you can play another dark arm, you can play anything that you want over this. You don't have to play this card. Um, I never summoned it. Uh, I thought it was gonna be really good. I never ever summoned this card. You do not have to play this card in Cash Tira to make the deck more budget. It's really a good option, but you don't have to play it. You can change that for any rank seven that you wanna play. We then play two copies of Link Spider. Link Spider was really okay if you went into the link engine but i didn't go into the link engine to step into heat soul in the whole tournament even though i went up against snake eye centurion and i went up against voiceless voice i never stepped into this just never had the like i never needed it because i opened everything that i needed so that's it for the extra deck that's it for the extra deck, guys let's get into the side deck i have some really spicy stuff in the side deck for you guys so i'm playing a lot of three ups in this side deck there's like 
five three ups to make up 15. So let me show you guys what I'm playing in here. So for the side deck, we're playing three copies of Lava Golem. Lava Golem was insane to be able to make because it outs so many boards. We don't need our normal summon. We can just basically hand them the Lava Golem and go here. Over two monsters, we out cards on the field. It's just really good. It does burn damage. You can close out games. And it's very easy to get through this card with like a copy of uh, Fenrir. So you don't need the normal summon in the deck because all your cards are Cyber Dragons. So you just special summon this card. Uh, we then play three copies of our Cosmic Cyclone. Cosmic Cyclone's really good in the deck overall because Cosmic basically just banishes a um, banishes a back row. You could probably side or get rid of the copy of uh, Preparation and a uh, Ogre and play two of these in the main. I did consider doing that in playtesting, but I felt like the Ogre was just really good to be able to summon out the body to, the to my side of the field. Plus, it's a different attribute for field spells, so I ended up keeping it. So this card is just really good in the side. I, I, think I, I think I only sided this against when I saw Horus. Or if I played against Centurion, I would side this in and I would basically just deal with the sarcophagus and it was really good to do that. Uh, we then played three copies of Fisher. Fisher is really good this format. This card is so this card is so good. Um, you side this in and it would be like three extra copies of uh, Shifter because every monster that's sent to the graveyard is banished instead. This card is definitely a three of in my side deck. It's so good to be able to play. It's basically a floodgate. I mean, it is a floodgate, and it's just really good overall. This card is so good in this deck. Uh, we then play three copies of Evenly, pretty standard. You just basically deal with your opponent's field. It's really good against rogue matchups. If they establish a field, they don't have a negate, you drop this. This won me a match against Voiceless Voice because I baited out the negate, and then I dropped Evenly match. Fenrir is one heck of a card to bait out of the gate. I tell you what. Uh, we then play three copies of Solemn Judgment. Solemn Judgment is really good. It just says no to anything. You pay half your life points. Didn't even hurt me in time. Um, really good to be able to just play this card to basically just say no to anything. It's really insane. So that's pretty much it for the deck, guys. I probably wouldn't change anything except maybe the copy of Preparation. I, I want to like Preparation. I really want to like Preparation, but I can't... I can't get into the card, but like I don't know what I would put in instead. Um, I really like this build. It's probably one of my favorite builds I've ever played of Cashier outside of when a Rise Heart was around and I topped regional and then carried it all the way to nationals. I really liked this list. I feel like it's really good. My matches, I played against Snake Eye, Voiceless Voice, and a really cool Centurion deck. Um, I really liked this list again though, but I, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't change anything. I feel like it's fine. I feel like it's totally fine how it is. You could change out SP Little Knight for any other rank seven if you want it for more budget options. But this list, really good. I really liked it. Again, guys, if you guys have not checked out the merch for the channel, you definitely should do so because it really helps out the channel. Pick up one of these awesome field centers because they're actually made of metal. They're awesome. You guys should definitely check these out. I use them every time I duel, and they're just really, really cool, and the backs of them are really cool, too. So that's going to do for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell there so you can come part of Notification Squad. And quick shout-out to Bud's Place, my locals, for always supporting the channel. I really appreciate it, guys. So that's going to do for this one, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. See you later, guys.